The title of the sermon today is Possible Until It Isn't. And I want to talk about weeds a little bit. They drive us crazy. They appear just when we thought we had gotten rid of all of them. I was browsing through the internet and came across an article from Bob Vila. And of course, if Bob Vila says it, it must be true, right? So this article listed nine weeds that we should welcome. And I'll just list a few of them. The first was dandelions. And we all dislike dandelions and want to dig them out. But Bob says that they attract good bugs like honeybees and they repel repests like army worms and to beat, they're edible. He talked about goldenrod, which we often confuse with ragweed that makes us sneeze and have allergy attacks, but true goldenrod is beautiful and it lures pollinators like honeybees and butterflies that pollinate our gardens and give us a better harvest. Then there are um, violets. So maybe I won't use the weed and feed on those because they're a great ground cover in areas too shady for grass. They're stinging nettles. When handled properly and steeped with boiling water, they make a great fertilizer. And then we have purslane, which is a super leafy, nutritious vegetable prized around the world. Well, and I've been digging them out of my driveway. Go figure. In the context of today's parable, as Jesus talked about the weeds and the tares, I mean the wheat and the tares and the weeds, we find weeds that are invasive, their roots linked with that of the wheat that was planted by the landowner and the weeds planted by his enemy. And our responses to those weeds can be very telling of our relationship with Christ, with those who are lost and with the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we look into your word today, we pray that you would help us to understand. As the disciples ask, we ask, what does this mean? Help us, us to understand your word in its context, and today, how we can respond to your teaching in this parable, how we can serve you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The first part we want to talk about is how we interpret parables. Because remember that Jesus had a purpose in teaching with parables. He was speaking into the context where the people lived, into the context that they understood. So we cannot always take a parable word for word because first of all, it's an analogy and analogies break down. They're not always exact. And secondly, this parable uses the physical to explain the spiritual. And we have to remember the original context. If we don't remember the original context or understand it, we might misinterpret Jesus' teaching. So let's turn to the prayer, parable. First of all, we have a rush to judgment. Didn't you buy good seed? The servants rushed back to the landowner. They were wondering how there were weeds mixed in if he bought good seed. Did the owner put the weeds there? Now, although the seeds were placed in the field by an enemy, they were now intertwined with the wheat and the servants were concerned. I think sometimes we ask questions of God in the same way. God, why are these circumstances here? What is the purpose of my suffering? Why does this person keep bothering me? Why are these weeds in my life taking away my joy? Why does this happen? Why are these people who are not serving you causing problems in my life? And sometimes people who are serving you causing problems. I don't understand. The servants didn't understand either. But even so, they decided that they were going to take action. They were going to fix it. Do you want us to pull the weeds, they said? If we do, we know the wheat will grow better. The weeds won't steal their nutrition, their water, or their sunshine. They rush to judgment, and we, we rush to judgment as well. And often that's our first reaction, isn't it? 
We complain about the wheat in our weeds in our lives, in our churches, in our communities. Our first reaction is to get rid of them. But that isn't how Jesus approaches weeds in the Gospels. The servants wanted to do a good thing, but had not thought out their proposed actions. If they pulled the weeds, they would also pull the wheat. The servants wanted to do a good thing. And we often judge and take action by what we see and what we think we know. The servants didn't recognize the false plans at first, but when they did recognize them, they wanted to get rid of them. And we are often the same. We react rather than ponder, counter rather than consider, retort rather than listen. And all the while, we deny God's patient and long-suffering grace toward us and especially toward others. Other times we judge because we don't know them. We don't know their situation. We don't know their faith. We don't know their lives. Mark 9 tells us about this. John said, teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and told him to stop because he was not one of us. How many times have you heard that or maybe even said it? Jesus replied, do not stop him for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me for whoever is not against us is for us. But we manufacture our sects, and when others don't agree, we push them out. We also judge people because they're different. Matthew 7, 1, Jesus warned us, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. We look beyond ourselves to judge one another. But remember how I said earlier that what we call weeds are actually food for others or may be useful to them. We look at people who bring challenge in our lives or pain in our lives and we call them useless. People who don't do things the way we expect them to do it useless but God but God has another plan God has a purpose for the weeds in the field you see we became children of the kingdom by grace through faith and so how much more does God want to do that for those who are different from us how the, Paul told Timothy, this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there was one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. And that's in 1 Timothy 2.4. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in the Old Testament, God spoke through Ezekiel the prophet in chapter 18 and said, have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live? So when we look at the parable, the landowner said, leave the weeds there, because if you pull them out, they will damage the wheat. The roots were intertwined. Pulling them would cause all kinds of problems. And just maybe, like the weeds I talked about earlier, these weeds could have a positive effect on the wheat. So how could weeds fulfill a need or do something beneficial in our lives? Well, when we keep the weeds 
when we keep an eye on them, when they're in our presence, one of the things is they help them make better choices. We see their example, we see what they do, and we say, I don't think I should go that way. So that's one good thing about weeds. And secondly, unlike in nature, we don't cast them out because unlike in nature, God is always calling and in the spiritual realm, weeds can turn into wheat. Possible until it isn't. God is always calling, inviting individuals to faith, to change, and to salvation. In the physical realm, the weed will always be a weed, beneficial or not. But in the spiritual, there is always the possibility for change. When we were without Christ, we were weeds in the field. We were not serving God or following God. We were sinners, separated from God. Without God's Spirit and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we would still be a field of weeds. We'd be here having lunch and partying in a social club rather than a church. God reached into our lives and turned us into something useful. We became beneficial members of the kingdom, able to provide nourishment and strength because of the grace that drew us to faith. The grace that saved us and made us whole, that adopted us into the family of God. And like us, those who aren't serving God have until their last breath to serve God. God is calling them, wooing them, just like he did you and me. God says to them, come to me, you can find freedom here, you can find strength here. It is possible until it isn't. One of the dangers in the presence of weeds though, is that when we, if we try to rip them out, we rip out the wheat. So if we just throw away people who are struggling, drug addicts, people who have issues, if we just say, I don't want them, I don't even want to look at them or know them, I'm judging them by forgetting where I came from, that I am a sinner saved by grace. And then we need to be sure that we do not live according to the flesh and follow their example. Paul said in Romans 8, 12 and 13, Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. We can't forget that we are different because then we may be drawn away from the kingdom. The purpose of the weeds in our lives is for us to reach them, not for them to influence us. So you see, we only became God's children, the wheat of the field, by answering the call of God through faith in Jesus Christ. In verse 15 of our passage, he said, you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. We don't have to live in fear of those around us, of people who are different, because we belong to God, to a Father who is all-powerful and almighty. And finally, even though the presence of evil among us causes suffering and frustration, God gives us hope. People cause us pain, sometimes terror, sometimes anger, but God gives us hope. Verse 18, he says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. The children of God. That's you and me. That believers around the world and those whom God continues to call to faith. Creation longs for them to be revealed, to see them renewed, redeemed, and restored. Now, when we don't see that happening, we have to have hope. 
Verse 24, Paul says, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. One of the dangers of dealing with weeds is that we lose our patience in waiting for God to transform them. We might lose hope because we set our eyes on their weaknesses and their sin, their failures and their rebellion. We lose our patience in hoping for God to make a difference in the person's life, in the person's actions, in the person's response to God, and then we become angry and bitter toward them, which affects our spiritual lives. I'd like us in closing to take a moment to think about the weeds in our lives. Now, I hope that none of us are the weeds to someone else, but it's possible. And if you are a weed in someone else's like, life, a thorn or something like that, well, maybe you should think about that this week too. But I want you to take a moment to think about the weeds in your life, the things you wish God would just take away. Pull up, get out of the way. We say, that person is never going to change. This situation will never work out. I'm done. My friends, God loves those people. God loves that person, that thorn in your flesh, as much as he loves you. Jesus said in the parable that the wheat will shine. Are you shining among the weeds in your life? Are you growing in Christ so that your spiritual life is evident? Our purpose as the wheat is to be light in the field, to the people around us, to our families, to our loved ones, to those who are weedy, even to the little stickers, or what we call them in Pittsburgh, the little jaggers, that stick to your clothes as you walk through the field and pinch you. We don't want them to stick to us and pinch us and cause us pain, but God puts us there. And even though the enemy puts fears into our lives to try to trip us up, even though struggles are there in our lives to drag us down or attempt to, and people try to make them worse, but God. But God. Romans 8.28, we know that all things, thorns, thistles, frustrations, weeds, all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purposes. We are the wheat, and God will gather the tares on the last day. But just maybe, and it may not be until their last breath, just maybe the miracle of God's grace will transform that individual, transform that burden, that rebellious one who turns away from God, because we were there as a witness to God's grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes we feel like we are weeds. We feel as if we are not good enough, that we are not faithful enough, not strong enough. But God, you remind us that we are good enough, not because of our own faithfulness, but because of your goodness, because of your spirit and your salvation given to us through Jesus' sacrifice and the strength and renewing that you bring us day by day. We pray, O oh God, for the weeds in our lives, for the people and things that are placed there trying to trip us up and draw us away from you, for those in our lives who cause us to be angry and bitter and miserable, and for those who break our hearts. Help us, O oh God. Help us to stand true and tall, to be witnesses to you of the adoption that you have given to us, that you have made us your children and you carry and strengthen us. We pray for others. Lord God, send your spirit into each life, into each situation. Remind us that we don't have to see you working in their lives or even in the situations to know that you are there. We thank you for your healing. Thank you for reminding us we are not alone. Help us to sense your presence with us in the trials and tribulations of this life. 
Strengthen us that we may continue to be your witnesses and your light to this world. Amen.